We spoke previously about the central dogma in which information in DNA goes through a process called transcription to be made into a very similar molecule called RNA. And that serves as sort of a temporary photocopy, we could think of it, of the information in the DNA. But most importantly, it, that information is used as a blueprint to synthesize protein. Now, we want to take a little bit of time in this video to talk about the structure of RNA. And the good news is it's so similar to DNA, not just in its name, but in its structure, that it's going to be a really easy thing to talk about. So let's push toward the end of the chapter, uh, notes. This may be a little bit out of order, um, but you can find it where it says RNA. And first of all, we have to say that there's two differences uh, between RNA and DNA that are of major importance. Let's start at the bottom of the page here and point out that RNA is made of ribose in its nucleotides. That's why it's called ribonucleic acid. And DNA, which we know as DNA, uh, deoxyribonucleic acid, has two prime deoxy ribose as its sugar. Um, why is there a difference here? It really comes down to this. DNA needs to be more stable as it's a long-term generational storage of information and ribose is less stable and it can break down fairly quickly because like I said it's really just a temporary copy that we use uh, for expediency in making a protein. So the backbone of DNA can be recognized by the absence of an hydroxyl at the two prime position, and RNA can be seen by having a hydroxyl at uh, two prime and three prime position. The other big difference is, and you may know this from biology, we have A T base pairs present in DNA, and we have uh, A U base pairs present in RNA. So DNA is composed of G's, A's, T's, and C's, whereas RNA is composed of G, A, U, and C's. It's a very minor difference. Note that the only difference is the presence of that methyl group right there. And really, I like to think of uh, a T shown here and a U shown here, they're really the same thing. Um, they have the exact same base pairing pattern with um, A and they have, they're both pyrimidines, so they behave very much in the same way. The only difference is, is we've got this extra tag sitting out here and this tag is there to tell any protein that wants to come along, uh, remind us that this is DNA and not RNA. And there's biological reasons for that. We won't get into them here. But this is something I like to just consider essentially a DNA tag. That's its purpose. Let's practice something here as we finish up uh, this page and move on to the next. Uh, this extra DNA tag, is this in the major or the minor groove? Pause for a second and see if you can figure that out. Okay, remember, major and minor groove are determined by the presence of the ribose connectivity and how they're not right across from each other. Instead, we have a small arc we call the minor groove and a large arc we call the major groove. And the DNA tag right here is in the major groove. So those are the two covalent differences that we have between uh, RNA and DNA, but there are some differences that we can talk about um, on this page as well. Let's make a note of the secondary structure of RNA and DNA. DNA we've already addressed, and we tend to call this the B form of nucleic acid. And when you have an RNA-RNA double helix, or an RNA-DNA hybrid helix, this is what we call the A form. 
and there's a few minor differences uh, that we're going to see here. First of all, we mentioned before that uh, we have 20 angstroms across, pretty even up and down the DNA. It's quite a bit wider in RNA. It's about 25 angstroms. We've got a larger minor groove and a smaller major groove compared to um, DNA and in the RNA double helix. Grooves are different. And the bases themselves, remember we said the bases are pretty much perpendicular to the axis of the DNA in the B form structure. They're quite a bit tilted in the A form structure. And lastly, we would note that DNA is almost always composed of two molecules, two strands that are linked together, and RNA is very often a single strand of one molecule that wraps up on itself. In other words, uh, we would have five prime and three prime, and if we follow from the beginning, five prime to three prime, we can go through and come back and uh, bind to itself. That naturally is going to lead to things like loops, and we can have all sorts of things like bulges, um, uh, non-standard base pairs. You might even have purines with uh, purines, things like that. And you get a lot of unusual structure in RNA. DNA structure is much more regular, and RNA is really got overall fold that we might even call tertiary structure. So. Uh, we won't get into the details uh, beyond these cartoons and these uh, statements about the differences, but I just want you to be aware that there are differences beyond the normal A versus U and deoxyribose versus ribose.